We are set for our next talk. Aaron, are you set? I'm, uh, hello, hello. All yes, right. it's loud, so, uh, loud for you. This is Aaron. He's, he's crazy, man. <laughs> 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 that's that's it. That's uh, all you got. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, how many of y'all have seen the movie uh, Ratatouille? The one. All right, there you go. You know, so all of y'all will realize when we say Chef Gustav actually said anybody can cook. Well, on that note, we have a former chef with us, and anybody <laughs> can code. So, for the last. Uh, I don't know, plenty of years, he's been staying in Vienna. And uh, when he is not cooking or tending to his chickens or playing with his two daughters, he codes a lot. And you'll see a lot more about it in his presentations. He organizes uh, four meetups in Vienna. And uh, Aaron, let's cook up something here. All right. Hello. Um, so I have a question real quick. A lot of, I, I was really surprised by how many people said that they write Go a lot. Um, how many of you came from Ruby? Wow, that, hmm, I should have probably figured that out beforehand. Okay, cool. So, um, I'm Aaron. Um, I build MVPs and prototypes for startups um, to try and get them funding with these technologies. I, I have a talk next month about that has Elixir in it, so I guess I have to learn Elixir now too. That'll probably be added to the stack. I talked here last year, and it was my first time in India, and I started cooking Indian food, and I kind of did it a lot. And I probably like 70% of the food I cooked in the last year has been Indian dishes, so. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's super, it's super, super good. And I think I've, I've been eating less meat and all kinds of stuff, it's, it's good stuff. Um, I, I co-organize, it's way at the bottom, I co-organize um, a conference called ROSConf, which stands for Ruby Open Source Software Conference, where we have uh, maintainers of open source, pro open source software projects come and give talks in the morning, and then in the afternoon, we all do a hacking session to clear up issues or add new features. Last time we had um, the Ruby programming language, we had Bundler, which is one of the package managers for Ruby, so we have kind of uh, big projects, and it's really neat. And our goal is to have people in, in their own towns start, have their own ROSConf. Like the overhead is super minimal with, you need like a co-working space. And it's, it's, it was super fun. Everyone had a good time. Like, I think everyone had a good time. And um, yeah, it's good stuff. So my talk today is also about interfaces, but kind of in a different uh, direction. But first off, um, Go has a lot of similarities to object oriented programming languages. So a couple of things are encapsulation, so with lowercase and uppercase inside of packages to make things public or private. There's kind of like a this or self when you're creating a method on a struct where the first thing is, is kind of this. Um, constructors, you have um, methods for your structs, mix-ins with embedded structs, and you have interfaces, which we just heard a nice talk about. Um, so I'm mostly going to be talking about something that's really uh, um, object-oriented, I can't even say it, object-oriented programming feature, um, mostly coming from, like, from Ruby, there's, there's Python, JavaScript, something called duct typing. And this, this term originally came from, I guess, a, a mailing list uh, message from, from Dave Thomas, who you love or you hate, and um, the point of it was for him to, he was talking about kind of the differentiation between Ruby and then languages like C++ and Java, where um, the, the meaning of duck typing is if it walks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, then it's a duck. And there's, there's these message boundaries between your different players in your system. And um, in practice, this means I can send a message to an instance of something and if it responds to that message, it doesn't matter if it, um, if it is a certain type. It, what matters is if it just responds to that message, which was pretty new at the time. Um, 
So it's really not about what something is, it's about the behavior or what it actually does. Um, so some of the benefits of duct typing are um, with testing, you can create interfaces to, um, to handle some of your, you can, you can implement an interface in your test and not have to worry about like what that thing is, what the actual application code that you're using. So for like mocking and stubbing. Um, we were hearing about contracts. There's a lot of these kind of clearly defined boundaries in your, in your structs, in your objects, where um, you give this public interface that doesn't change very often. And then inside of your struct, all of the behavior, all of the things that happen inside, they can change as much as you want. And so you delegate to this. So you, it, it really helps you not have to worry so much about changes in your system. Your maintenance costs go down. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit also about confident code. So Avdi Grimm from the Ruby community, um, <laughs> there's not many Rubyists, um, he, he has this idea that he came up with of, of, of confident code. And confident code is code that, that tells a consistent narrative. So if you, in, in most methods you have input, output, and error handling, and generally they happen kind of in some sort of a consistent order. Um, if, if code isn't confident, there's error handling going on in one spot where there's input happening, and then maybe you're checking input again, then there's error handling mixed in with all of these things, and confident code, you try and can make all of those things consistent. It's easier to read, it's easier to reason about. And instead of um, asking something what it is, you, you tell it, you send it a message, you say, hey duck, quack, and it quacks for you. Um, so I'm going to do right now, this is awesome, I'm going to do a code example in Ruby. I, I, used, I picked Ruby just in case since there's only like eight hands. I picked it also because it's, it's, it almost looks like pseudocode to me sometimes, so um, maybe Python is more pseudocode-y. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give an example in Ruby of, of a, a problem that we will solve with duct typing, and then I'll show the example also in Go. So what our system is, it's a system that takes documents and it gets them prepared for download. So with, uh, for example, there's a PDF, I, I think it's readable. There's a PDF where you, one thing you have to do with PDF is take it and make the first, um, the first page of it an image. The next thing you need to do maybe is to optimize it and make the JPEGs less quality um, for, a, for a ping or a PNG. Um, who says ping? No one, okay. PNG, um, you, you might need to resize it, get three different sizes. For a text file, you might want to zip it. So then we can take it and we create a, a new PDF, a new PNG, and a new text file. We throw them into a list, into an array, and then we go, we iterate over each one. That's what's happening here. And then we check the type. We say, is this a PDF? It's a P if it's a PDF, then we need to um, do the image thing, optimize it. If it's a ping, we need to resize it. So this is, um, this is not ideal. And I see a lot of code like this. Um, so what we can do is we can create an interface or a duct type out of it. Um, we add a prepare method or a prepare download method to each of the types and then just delegate out to the things that we need to do inside of that. Then we end up with this. It's just is, is short, it talks to us, it's beautiful. Or with Ruby, you can even do this one-liner thing, but. <laughs> um, so in Go, the way we do this is we can create structs for each of these things. Um, you can see there's more to them here. A PDF might have a, a, a byte slice for its body. Uh, the ping might have different virgin, versions that are embedded structs, and this, the text might have a string instead of the other things. Um, so we, we add our methods. It's pretty straightforward, it's the same. Um, I used pointers because we want to um, change these things in place. And then we can look at our code right here, which is the same as the, the Ruby code, that we have a, a slice of interfaces. Um, and then this is just awful. And you can see that we're checking the type just like in the other code, and then we're going through and doing the things that we need to do to it. And just it's, it's, not, it's not ideal at all. So we're going to add a duck to it. 
And our duck is this download prepare interface. We have a prepare method, um, and we just create, on all of our structs, we create this, this method, delegate it to our other things, um, and then you can see that with the documents, we have a, a, a slice of, doc, of download preparers, and then we just go through and we doc prepare everything, and it's beautiful. It's a beautiful duck. Um, it's, it's the most beautiful duck that I've ever seen. And like, duck type it, duck type everything. So the next thing I'm gonna show you is some, some ducks that I found in the wild. So I, I, in my last talk here, and lots of talks I've given, kind of my thing that I say over and over again is to take some time every day, a few times a week to like go to GitHub, look through your source code, um, just in some of your spare time. You love to code probably if you're here at a conference. Um, so maybe take some of that, that fun time that you're spending maybe watching shows or reading um, the Hacker News or something and instead read some source code. So I read some source code and I found a couple of projects that seemed interesting. There's this project called S. Um, what S does is it's a command line client that searches kind of everything. So if you want to search Amazon, you want to search Reddit, um, YouTube, you can just say what provider you want and then talk about, you just, then you add what your search is. So it will open up a browser and it will not sometimes give you the thing that you're actually searching for, but it's, it's pretty neat. And so in their code base, they have an idea of a provider and the provider is one of these services. So YouTube um, or, or Bing, which is our next example. Um, so the provider has just this build URI that takes a string and it, re and it returns a string. And here it is being used at the bottom here for the Bing package where it just creates a, a URL and adds, adds the, 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 term, the query to the, to the end of the search. So then what happens is when you actually call into it, it, it looks, it finds your provider in this, in this map and then just called to build URI on it, and then calls it, opens your browser. Super simple. Here's like a really straightforward way that I've seen an interface being used. Um, so here's one more example of using it. I don't know if anyone has watched this, uh, this video, this um, Golang versus JavaScript wrap, but uh, it's very, very highly recommended. I'll have a link to my slides afterward that also has a, a link to this, uh, this video. It's, it's, you, gotta, you gotta check it out, it's really good stuff. So, Another example, um, there's this, 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 it's a platform as a service um, that, that uses Docker containers called Worker. Um, and they, they use interfaces also quite a bit in their code. And I tried to find one, a couple of examples that worked out. So the thing that you're running, kind of your application that you're running, the main thing is called a box. And in the box, there's this add service and service box. Service box is also an interface. Um, here is the definition of it. And we have run, get ID. So there's some basic things you would want from a service. A service in this instance is like, maybe you have a container that's running MongoDB or you have a container running um, Redis or something. That would be a, a service. So the service just, it knows kind of how to start itself. It knows how to run. It knows how to get its, its container ID. Um, and the way that it's used, so they add the boxes to, they add the services to the box here. Um, and then when they want to run a service, they just loop through the services and run all of the services in this bottom line of the yellow. They don't care what the service is, like it could be MongoDB, it could be whatever it is, it doesn't matter, they just run it. Um, and then you can also get links. So there's a lot of just parts of this, this service that are available to everyone. It's good stuff. Um, so code confidently. Um, don't, don't check on type if you don't have to. If you see, it's actually called a switch statement smell, this checking on type in a switch statement. Um, Avoid that. If you see that, you probably are looking at something that could be extracted into an interface. Um, and look for those things. 
pull your ducks out, create interfaces for them, um, read source code as much as you possibly can. You will learn whatever technology, whatever tool you're trying to learn much, much more quickly. And um, thank you. The, s the slides are available here, and that's also a link to it with the thing. I don't know if anyone uses QR codes. I just kind of throw them around sometimes. Um, and yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, we have time for a couple of questions. Anyone? I think everyone's looking out for the break. Aaron. Yeah, come and talk to me if you want to ask a question later. If yeah, so Aaron, shy. thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Okay, it's time for a quick tea break. There are tea counters outside. Uh, just one thing, please help out our sponsors. Please go to their booth, go sign up, uh, get your tickets, get buy the books. Please meet our sponsors. When you meet the sponsors, they sponsor it next, next time. <laughs> so enjoy.